What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode. This is episode 11 of a Disc Golf Podcast. I know we're double digits now. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, yeah, so we're on episode 11. Obviously, the digs have changed. We talked about this on the last podcast. Our setup's a little different, so we're, we're getting used to this new setup and yeah. making sure it looks good and sounds good. Pretty sure it sounds good because it's I'm using the same exact setup as it was before, but now we're not right up on top of each other. We're not in the phone. No, this booth. is nice. Yeah, so got the little desk that we got to screw in. You and Dylan both did the same thing where you leaned on it and turned it over, but we got to get this desk with the legs and everything set up. But anyway, welcome back again. Uh, man, as you can see behind me, we we need organization. We're working on it, but we'll get there. Uh, this, is, this podcast is brought to you by Goodline Disc Golf. So for all your disc golf needs, come, come check us out, goodlinediscgolf.com. You'll see us at tournaments and things like that. And then we'll also have some regular hours, even in the shop format that we have right now. We're going to have some regular hours that people can come by and shop around, pick stuff up, uh, and we'll do local pickups, local deliveries, and shipping. So there's there's all kinds of discount codes out there, but I'm not <laughs> going to give you one. So, <laughs> But anyway. Yeah, use mine. Yeah, you don't have one this year. <laughs> you almost did. You almost did. But <laughs> anyway. All right. So we're going to start this thing like we always do. We're going to start this thing talking about the tour. Uh, tour update. And we got a couple winners of Texas States. Man, uh, what about them European women? Dude, they're tearing it up. It's man. like they come over with a vengeance. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like, uh, man, I, I was thinking that exact same thing, honestly. With the women, like, what, what are the American women going to do? Because I think it's, what, three out of the last five events? How many yeah, have we had at five At least events? three. Cause three. Chris, Kristen, and yep. then last week, and Evelina. And Evelina. And then, um, where where's Owen from? I know, I'm pretty sure she's California. I'm pretty sure she's American, but yeah. But I don't. Her accent makes me think that maybe she's not like straight. Uh, you think she's Laos? I think maybe okay. something like Laotian. that. Ocean. Yeah, but okay. I think I think she hails in California yeah. area, but she calls California home. But I'm I'm wondering if it's like the Kristen effect. You know, they're they're seeing like her success over here, and. You know, we don't know what's going on in Europe yeah. all the time, unless it's some you know the European Open or whatever. But they they have to just probably you know I I would think it's kind of like you know if you think back even five years ago, mm-hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, here in the states, you know, it was Paige. Oh yeah, absolutely. And you know everybody was like, okay, that's the bar. Sure. You know that's where we need to get to. You know that's got to be what's happening across the pond, in sure. my opinion. Yeah, you know, they're yeah. like, okay, Kristen's setting that bar, absolutely. So this is what we have to do to get there, yeah. and then they're going to come over and test test their skills in the states. And I mean, it's great golf. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's really good for sure. Like she and I think Anakin, I think she had a she had a stroke lead going into the last couple holes. She didn't really attack anything. She was like, look, I guess if Kristen's going to beat me, she's going to beat me, right? And she did. So Anakin, she got out of there. Um, I think, man. I think to your point with there's something too about the European women and and players in general mm-hmm. that when they win, when they do something specifically in those smaller European countries, they're like it's like a national thing. It's like a national oh, recognition. Yeah. Like uh they I, I think they made national Anakin talked about making national news um for winning uh, just a pro tour event here right. and see even even but when she's I'm, the first one where's she from norway norway mm-hmm. yeah first one from norway so. uh, yeah absolutely and i even me saying it that's kind of uh, the way i said it was kind of sad uh and it was just a pro tour it was a pro tour event right. right and they make a big deal out of it um whereas here uh we <laughs> what what happens when what happens if jeff goes and wins a pro tour event like us i'm gonna make a big deal we it. are yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> uh, like our buddies, we we made a big deal out of you winning the MP. Well, we tried to anyway, but in MP forty World Championship of putting, like we, right? We made it. We make a big deal out of that. Uh, we don't. We don't let you live it down. Well, let me see. I wonder, like, but it's not in the papers or anything. I know, but everybody, everybody here in the states compares disc golf to the traditional ball golf, and we see yeah. what the PGA is doing yeah. for years. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I'm sure there's a European golf tour. Sure, yeah. But is it as big? No, probably not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And the fact that we don't, there's not necessarily a European disc golf pro tour yet. Yeah. To the point where, okay, they're going to make a big deal out of it because their players are traveling overseas. Yeah. And winning. For sure. So, yeah, yeah why wouldn't they make a big they deal? They should, yeah. And if, if she's got that notoriety now saying, well, I'm the first Norwegian. Yeah. 
to win, win a pro tour. tour. Mm-hmm. I don't know how many male I Norwegians don't, there are, but yeah, I don't know either. But still, if she's the first one, then right. yeah, why wouldn't they make a big deal? Sure, absolutely. I think I think you're right. I'm just I'm just kind of playing. I'm kind of thinking about like what would it take for us even to have like you know Tennessee to make a big deal out of out of the fact that one of their own is one a pro tour event. And I'm not saying like because like disc golfers will like, mm-hmm. but we. I think we struggle sometimes from the fact that like disc golf is not like, it's not like popular. It's it's not on the same level as basketball, football. Oh yeah, it's not even on the same level as like volleyball kind of thing. Like to right. in people's and not that no no offense volleyball players. I'm just like that every other, there's every other sport and then there's like disc golf. Yeah, I mean it's not so, even as popular as cornhole. <laughs> true, absolutely. You know, cornhole's yeah. on ESPN a lot. Right. You know so. But in our world, we see it as like, man, this is. Sometimes we look at yeah. it and go, "This is it, man. This is our, this is our sports." Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Anyway, uh, but yeah, I'd love to see what this. I think that's the part of grow the sport that I'd like to see happen now. Like, I think we we actually have some player base. Uh, I just like to see like the notoriety of the sport maybe grow right. in a way that it's like recognized as this is act, this is a sport. You know, my my grandparents like to tell me. I know we're we're kind of off on a tangent a little bit, but my grandparents like to tell me. Uh, you know, because I I, run, I have this shop and everything, they're like, in ten years, disc golf's gonna be in the Olympics. Like they want, they like to tell me that, <laughs> and so I appreciate the support. And I'm like, I don't know, I hope so. I think it could could be in the Olympics, but who knows? Yeah, I think it'd be tough to figure out. I think their their whole thing is what kind of format mm-hmm. can it can it be? Is it team? Is it singles? You know, individuals? Right. Who knows? Yeah. But yeah, Anakin Steen. That's to put it all out there. On that, Anakin Steen wins Texas, Texas State's first Norwegian woman mm-hmm. or person in general yeah. to win yeah. uh, an event, and she wins it by a stroke. She beating Kristen Tatar. Um, we t- we just talked about one of the things that I did kind of want to hit on is the European women, but also want to talk about. There's a little bit of a narrative shift f- in the women's division right now. For me, anyway, is what I'm recognizing because at the beginning of the season, I said Kristen's winning everything. Um, that's not the case. The European no. women are, every, are yeah. winning everything, but there is a little bit of parity. Is that because Kristen is have like? Is that because she's in a slump, or is that because other players are playing well? What I mean, she they both played great golf. Yeah, I think so. so. I mean, I don't. I think they just she played better. Yeah, that was it. There you go. Yeah, I, I, don't, yeah. I don't think she. I don't think Kristen's in a slump at all. Because right. I mean, obviously, she came over here just shooting very stellar. So sure. The narrative after U.S. Women's because she she kind of seemed a little frustrated. Kristen did, and she kind of seemed a little downtrodden. And so the narrative was like, "Oh, maybe Kristen's having a slump right now." She talked about maybe a slump, but one tournament doesn't equal a slump. Two tournaments to me doesn't equal a slump, yeah. kind of thing. Uh, so, I. And how can you say she's in a slump when like she's in the hunt right for, for the tournament? Absolutely, you know? she's she's one that's messed around and like accidentally won. Like she can be in a slump and still win, so I I think like that narrative probably needs to be squelched for now because she even if Kristen's in a slump, beating her is not easy no. a- according to like just the the data, right? She's mm-hmm. messed around and been like, oh, I won, <laughs> you know, when right. she thought she was playing bad. So anyway, and then on the men's side, I called it last week on the podcast. <laughs> Anthony Barella takes another win. He was one of my two picks. I think my other one was. uh it wasn't Matty O. It was someone else. But anyway, Anthony Barella is the one I picked. Um, that dude, he is hitting. He's just doing everything right this season to me. I don't yeah, know if you so watched far. any of this stuff. Yeah, yeah, I did. I watched the probably the last three fourths of the final round. Yeah, and don't get. I'm not gonna lie. I was rooting for like a playoff. Yeah, right. Like, sure. I was like, dude, this is gonna be awesome. This <laughs> gonna, you yeah. know. So I was like, come on, Gannon, you know, catch him. And I thought he yeah. was going to, but. Yeah. You Gannon know? had a heater that last right. week. Everyone. I mean, he was on it. I mean, that putt Barella hit on 17 was clutch. Yes, absolutely it clutch. was. Like, man, they other golfers keep saying it. Like, when I'm watching other podcasts and watching interviews, other golfers keep saying Anthony, Pod- <laughs> Anthony Barella has something that nobody else has. It's like that 600 foot and 600 foot with – touch and then his down pace of 400 feet lands like so soft apparently at the basket hmm. and i wasn't even noticing it but now like when i'm watching the thing i'm like he is like kind of lacing everything up and last year we got those exciting in the last few years we got those exciting things from anthony brill where he hit par five he'd hit a roller just just he was gonna hit a roller and try to get the eagle and now if the par five is 
I don't know, let's say the par five is a thousand feet. I mean, he's still throwing six hundred feet in with like a golf shot, right? And then and then lay, then pitching up for his eagle, right, or whatever. Not the four hundred foot pitch up. That's hard to say, but no. But when you can throw <laughs> mid three fifty, that's yeah. pretty much pitch up, right, for them. And so he and he he's not when he would have used to go for the albatross. They uh, there you see a lot of other golfers who have kind of matured into that. Um, Simon Lazat. There was a couple years ago when he was like Paul McBeth told him to stop going for the Simon lines mm-hmm. and to play golf. And when he did, he won some events. You know, like. I think Anthony Brill is kind of coming into his own now. Like, I just need to go out here and win, and I can if I just play golf. Right. Um, so I'm, I, I think he's hitting all the right buttons this year. So I'm, I'm excited for him, and I, I was not a fan before this year, but winning does something, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he got that taste early in the year, so now it's just like, okay, I can do this. I, you know, it's got to be a confidence booster. And mm-hmm. So yeah, it was, it was good golf for sure on that. That final card. His second round, he shot 16 under, so that kind of helps. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <That's> ridiculous. <laughs> that kind of helps going into the last round. Right. <laughs> that, uh, was, that was crazy. I've shot a 16 under once. Here? No. Oh, okay. At an actual event. Oh, snap. Yeah, it was a long time ago. I was still playing MA1. Yeah, okay. Um, Not to get off on that tangent, but it was a pretty cool moment. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was down in Orlando, Southeastern Amateur Championship twenty. I'm gonna get that date wrong. 2017. <laughs> yeah. Some no no. It's gotta be before that. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Mid mid 2010s. Okay. <laughs> somewhere around there. Okay. But yeah, it was it was um it was a course that was set up right there in that Barnett Park and uh yeah I went 16 in a row right off the get go and uh like it was it was crazy it was like I was pitching a no hitter. Yeah, man. You know, like the whole. So at that time, we didn't have digital scorekeeping. Sure. So it was a card, and you even passed the card around. Right. right. Everybody got. No, we didn't know. Nobody passed the card. Yeah. The dude that had it, fat hole one, had it all the way to hole 17, basically. Yeah. When I hit the tree. Oh, okay. He's like, all right, here you go. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, it was pretty cool. Um, it rated like 1062. Oh, snap. And I mean, I, it jumped me up into the lead, and I was able to win that tournament, but. That course, it was the equestrian course down there, which okay, I don't know if it was a temp or a permanent temp or something. I don't know, but it got a redesign after that year and all uh, that other jazz. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I set the course record on that course; it'll never be broken. That that's nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's fun. That's my 15 <laughs> seconds. But no, yeah, it was that was pretty. It was pretty cool. Like it was. It was like pitching no hitter. Nobody was talking to me the whole time. Yeah, I'm letting you be. Yeah. yeah, and then like hole seventeen, I hit this tree in the middle of the fairway that I needed to miss, and yeah, everybody's like, "Oh, I'm breathing now." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, man, that- we had. A- <laughs> I-, I had. I've never had a sixteen. I think I, the two thousand rated rounds I've had, I think I've had two. One felt like that where it was like everything's just kind of working, mm-hmm. and I'm breathing and it's happening. One felt like work. That one felt like every. It was at HV, so every time like. I play HV Griffin so much right. that it's like, which is our little short course over here, that I was like, every putt felt like just hard work. I don't know. The drives felt good, but if I had to putt from anywhere cl- further than 20 feet, I was like. <laughs> well, that was the old baskets, too, and you <laughs> never knew if they were going to catch it or not. That's true. Yes. Now, these new ones, they catch great, catch but you just got to throw it, you know, five <laughs> stories in the air. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I've noticed that. A fun fact about those MVP baskets, man. There, somewhat, there was another course. It was like a pro tour course that had them, and the pros were talking about them being high. They're just, they're just taller baskets. Um, they made them, they've made them too like taller than the other ones. Well, it sounds like they need to just dig deeper holes. Well, you can't, because then you bury the sleeve, and you can't get to the, you can't oh get to the goodness. sleeve. So there are, they're manufactured like a longer base pole. They're manufactured a longer base pole with the same, like so, it, you bury them two feet in the ground, and then you got this much clearance, like mm-hmm. for the for the. Unless the lock, unless there's rock, but yeah, this much clearance for the ro- the lock, and then every, after that, it's like, well, what else can you do besides we can chop the pole down, we can like cut, we can pipe cut it. Yeah. But anyway, it's gosh, weird, just rabbit trailing today. Anyway, it's con- yes. content. <laughs> <laughs> content is content. Uh, all right. So one thing I wanted to talk about before we get all to the local scene, because that's what we do with you, is this Discraft Tour Series plastic, man. This is this stuff, uh, the Jawbreaker Flex, um, is 
Interest. Have you ever seen any? <laughs> yeah, you can hold it up. Have, have you ever seen anything like that? In a candy store. <laughs> yeah. It's like, here, let me, I'm going to go over here and grab this one real quick. Yeah. I mean, like, hold on, there's more here. Sold. Yeah, I don't. Even, I don't even know what to call this. Like, I don't even think it's a swirl splatter. Yeah, splatter it's, design. I don't know what that is. It's like, they're it's their. They call it Jawbreaker Flex, but it's like a. I guess it's like a Z. Their Z plastic, champion plastic. That's like gummy, or supposed to be gummy. If to me, it feels really good. Uh, and it mm. looks really cool. It lo- be, definitely looks cool. I'd be worried about a little bit of delamination if it. If that was gonna happen, like if if any of this stuff would peel off, obviously not. Like I think it's primed well. I think, <laughs> obviously not. Like I've looked at this with stuff before, but we need a chemical engineer. I have. A, there's one of them. Aisle five. There's one of them, and I think it. I don't think it's been bought yet, but there's one of them. Like on one of the wings, some of this blue stuff. Like if you're looking at this disc, some of the blue stuff or some of the splatter stuff, like that white right there. You can feel it. You can feel uh, it. Yeah, you can feel the white right here on this one. Some of them are better, but. You sure that's not the that's oh, stamp? Oh, I'm certain. Oh, yeah, I felt that. Yeah, so you, but like, so I wonder if once you start hitting trees and scraping through that first layer, if <laughs> if this stuff will start like fraying. I, uh, I don't think so, but. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. I've, that's one thing I thought about. All you discraft gurus, comment. Yeah, and, tell us about it. Yeah, let I, us let us know the inside info. But I, I think it's really cool. I mean, it's one thing. That's one thing. Like, I opened so many discs. You know, open so many boxes of right. disc that when something different comes out of the box, I'm like, ooh, I want to, I want to try all these. Right? <laughs> what um, is that? Right. I wonder if they'll do these in. St- I think they should try and do these in stock if they can, but then it makes these less special. So I don't know. But uh, but you're carrying all those. Yeah, I'm carrying all the tour series stuff. Shameless plug coming. Right. So what? Macbeth, Hammis. Who else? Is, <laughs> who else is the tour series? Holland Hanley has one. Valerie Mandahano, Ezra Aderhold. The only one I didn't get. So uh, there's two that we didn't get. Anthony Barella has the Venom, uh, and that one that that mold doesn't sell well here. I don't know why. I like think it's a good mold. locally here. Locally, it doesn't hmm. it doesn't sell here. So it sell super well. I think it's because it, if it slots in, nobody has the power. Like AD when he. Anthony Brella, when he throws it, it's like a firebird, but like not a firebird, uh, raptor, but long. It's like a long raptor. Oh, so it goes straight and then it finishes. So it's guaranteed you'll throw at least five hundred feet if you get one. <laughs> Absolutely, that's it. I uh, get it. <laughs> but um, I think everyone here doesn't have the arm strength, so it's just or not. We don't have any of those guys who are throwing six hundred feet. So it throws like a raptor for them anyway. No. <laughs> anyway, but anyway, it, it, try it out again. Anyway. But then the other one we didn't get is because it was sold out so fast is Brody Smith's, uh, what's his tour series, is Zone OS, the Zone Over Stable. Uh, wow. That he, they sold, like, on the dealer website super fast. They were gone kind Dang. of thing. That so, dude moved some plastic. That's, that's – absolutely. I want to talk about some other plastic, and then I want to talk about what drives, like, plastic sales, what what drives moving – what moves plastic. But we'll get there to that. Um, so – Disc Craft Tour Series, really cool plastic, brand new stuff. Check it out on goodlydiscoff.com uh, and your, or your local retailer. They probably have it. Mm-hmm. All right. Disc Mania. I don't know if you've heard about this. I got an email from them today, or maybe it was yesterday. Disc Mania is moving. So as a retailer, they, they had a wholesale website where I got my stuff. They're moving all their stuff off of that website, so they're transitioning from them to Disc Golf Distribution. So... What used to be dynamic distribution mm-hmm. is now disc golf distribution, mm-hmm. and they are now housing the trilogy brands. So Lat sixty four, West Side, and Dynamic Disc. They're housing Castaplast now. That's where they're um, distributing Castaplast from. And they're also uh, that they're doing hand eye. Obviously, that's that's something they've done in the past. Uh, and then Disc Mania now. So Disc Mania is now going to be all, all under the umbrella as far as mm. being I didn't hear about distributed that by the same. Yep, distributed by the same. Because we're going through that as a as a team player. Mm-hmm. Um, we go through that, and and basically um, our allotments. Yeah, go through that wholesale distribution. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but I didn't know Disc Mania was on board with that team. Yep, Disc Mania is moving. I don't. It's not obviously not today. Right. But um, they're transitioning. So as of right now, I can order from anything Disc Mania that's on the website, which I think has, some have already hit Disc Golf Distribution. 
I can order from there, and then I can still order from Discmania's website until they com- completely merge. I think they're doing like three months or something like that. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. And another thing that screams, I mean, like that screams Discmania, Disc, Dynamic Disc, House of Disc owns Discmania. Like that screams that to me. I can't. It They do. Defunct that. I don't know if they, do they own it? House of Disc owns Discmania. Do they? Yes. Wow. Um, they got their hands everywhere. They do, they? man. They got they own Castaplast now too. I knew uh, that. So yeah, uh, they don't necessarily. They aren't the. Uh, uh, what's his face? Yuri, Yuri? No, Danny. Danny. He still. I mean, he still got his hands in it. He still runs everything. I think he's still kind of an owner. But House of Disc, from what I understand, bought bought Discmania. Okay, mm. not bought Discmania. So when Discmania moved their manufacturing from Innova to Europe, right? Uh, they it basically was like we're using trilogy plastic. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and then there's been a like a kind of a quiet shift of House of Disc kind of taking over as an owner of Discmania. All right, there are some things out there. I've uh, I'm pretty sure I've read read that a few times as a retailer or whatever. But anyway, all that being said, th- that's not the only thing that screams. Hey, we're part of House of Disc now. We're we're trilogy now. The other thing is hand eye has now stamps on Discmania stuff. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So there's like five five discs. I'm going to see if I can pull it up and show them to you. But there's five discs or five stamps that have uh, Hand Eye and Discmania collaboration, which is so weird to me. Yeah, It's funny that you haven't seen it yet. No. Yeah, look. Uh, well, that's on a that's on a Reco, which is Castaplast or Rico, however you say it. I'm going to find these discs real quick because they say disc mania. Oh, you know what? Well, you know, it's like hand eye is just a, it's a, a label, basically. You know, a company is in its own. Right. right. So, I mean, I think it's good for for hand eye and Crispin to. Crispin Carrasco. Yeah, here it is. To branch out and put, put them on different molds. Okay. So, on. Now, this was a day ago. But so for a second, because when I wa- looked at it originally, I was like, "This has got to be an April Fool's <laughs> deal," because you know April, oh, they yeah. do those discs, right? And it's not. I mean, it was a day ago, uh, and it's in their latest subscription box of Hand Eye subscription box. It's a Disc Mania D Line Flex Two. You can see right there on there. It's got like the Hand Eye wings. Oh yeah. And then Disc Mania with the Hand Eye over the the eye of Disc Mania, and then that's a Metal Flake MD Three, and then there's the FD. I mean, it's on the internet. It must be true. I mean, it they they haven't come out and said they are, it's not them. This is on their official right that's Instagram. On, so yeah. Hand Eye's official Instagram. So, uh, I mean, that's it. They look. I like the stamps. I think they look cool. But I think that's another thing that screams, "Hey, House of Disc Trilogy is in charge of Discmania." Now, whatever level of involvement they have with each other, I know that they have some sort of control and some sort of ownership in Discmania. Oh, it's, so, I mean, I'm sure if that's the, that's the case now and if they're moving everything to that distribution site. Yep. I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm not that deep into the, yeah, the inner working. So sure. <laughs> I think it's, so as a, as a sponsor player by trilogy, which is dynamic specifically, mm-hmm. you're able to throw lat 64. Yes. You're able to throw West side. Correct. Are you able to throw Castaplast? Nope. Why not? No, not part of the trilogy brand. So you probably won't be able to throw Discmania. No, hmm. pretty much I, guarantee I will not be able to throw Discmania. That's interesting to me. Yeah. That like, how are they going to if they, let's, they own all these things? And I've heard other people. Well, talk the about House of Dis owns all those things, but right. I think within that umbrella, there's another umbrella that just houses like DD West Side right. and Lat. Sure. How do they keep them? Dis- Here's what I want to know. I think Trilogy has done a good job of keeping their brand distinct enough while using the same plastic. But bringing Discmania in, and I've talked about this a little bit on the podcast before, but bringing Discmania in and bringing Castaplast in, how do you keep those brands distinct enough from what's already been made by Trilogy if you're using the same plastic? Because Castaplast, what they had going for them, I believe, is their plastic. But I, are they just under the ownership umbrella and not so much the manufacturing umbrella? Because it's Castaplast saying, you know, made in Sweden, or are they still based in, were, were they Finland as well? Yeah, I haven't, I have some Castaplast in here, I haven't looked on them. They're, the K1 Soft still feels like K1 Soft to mm-hmm. me, it still feels the same. Because obviously they were producing discs yeah. before the 
yeah, the for merge. Sure. So, but when Disc Man- but Disc Mania, when they went over there to England, I can't. I mean, not England, Europe. I can't think of exactly where they came. Their plastics did go to Trilogy Plastic. I mean, like it's been that's been documented and said. Like their sea line plastic was just uh, whatever the is it fusion that you was whatever the what not fusion. What's um, a see through plastic? Uh, for who? For, for dynamic, sure. Oh, the lucid. Lucid. It was just like a loose, a type of lucid plastic. Mm-hmm. It was already plastic they were using. Well, see, you know, West Side, they they had their molds done in Finland, and you know, even though Latitude at the time, you know, had the ownership or yeah, or whatever. And I mean, I'm not even a hundred percent sure if the Lat sixty four um, d- production makes west side plastic or if west side still producing it and like that whole umbrella of the house of house of this and the trilogy umbrella that just could be financial it could be you yeah. know arrangements i think their plastics are getting into each other i just don't know how much and and what how to if they're like hey we we i know this is some of your plastic but like this specific blend is ours like we mix it up this way and you mix it up that way kind of thing anyway I mean, that's just a lot for me to think, like, the undertaking, like, because it's already, DD already relies on Latitude's production to do their line. Yeah. So those two companies' plastics are the same. Are the, yeah. basically the same. Right. Uh, as far as Castle Plast goes, I don't know. I've never heard of, of Latitude making their production I either. haven't either, but I just it's just odd. Because I think there have been some runs. Not odd. There have been some runs, though, that, like, this doesn't feel like class, Castle Plast. This feels like... And I'm not, and I'm not like totally familiar yeah. on Castaplast. I mean, I've obviously when that acquisition happened a couple yeah. years ago, mm-hmm. you know, there was a lot of chatter in the in the team pages. They're like, "Oh, can, can we, we throw it? Can we throw a berg? Yeah, yeah right. You know." Yeah. And they're like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> the berg is the. I, <laughs> I think everybody wanted to know, bag man. a berg. It's the dar. It was the darling for a minute. Everybody <laughs> wanted to. I bagged one for a little bit. Uh, obviously, I'm not good enough to throw one, apparently. But, uh, man, a couple more things. I don't know if you saw, talking about April Fool's. Uh, did you see Innova's release? They did the April Fool's release. No, I didn't see that. They I, d- I saw the Tiger Woods sign with DD for like $500 million <laughs> yes, or something. Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, I did see that one. Um, Innova did a disc. Um, you know, last year they did the Halo Polecat, or a couple years ago they did the Halo Polecat as a joke, and then it ended up being a real thing. They did... A Calvin Heimberg signature Halo groove. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> uh, I want one. The groove. <laughs> the groove. Did you throw a groove back in the day? Ever? A long time ago. <laughs> yeah. When it was the fastest disc in any of his lineup, it was like, yeah. I'm- the worst disc ever. <laughs> yeah, I disagree. Was, that was a tough one. That was a tough one to throw. It was just, just it was just awkward. Yeah. To me, it was incons- they were inconsistent. So I could buy a groove and it'd be like a tilt, and the next groove would be like a turn yeah. or whatever. I don't know why that was the case, but that's how I felt. I liked him. I, I had a buddy <laughs> that I used to play with down in Florida, and like, yeah, he he was he throw the groove all over the course. <laughs> he loved it. I remember thinking like, you know, because when I got into, I think when I got into the game, it was the fastest disc that Innova had, and well, one of them anyway, that or the Katana. And I was like, if if I want to throw far, I got to throw the fastest disc. <laughs> so that's that was the groove. That was the groove for me. Uh, so the Katana was a, one of my first ones. I like really? that one, yeah. So now I'm going to pull up that the what's it called? Aftermarket or the 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 resale market. The resale market on these grooves ridiculous. Wait, hey, on which grooves? Like the old school runs? The Calvin Heinberg ones. Oh. Like, the, A- the April Fools? The, no, yeah, I mean they put oh, they, it out. They put it out. That's real. I mean They really did it. That was on end of us. It sold out in like in like a minute. Oh yeah, I imagine. But I'm trying to find. It was like that one year. DD made like a um. I don't remember what disc it was. A, the Vandal maybe, but they had the paper plate on it, and, it, and you know they had like the flight numbers. Like the turn was like negative eight or something. You know, something <laughs> That's crazy. That's exactly what it would be. Uh, I'm trying to find them because people. I can't. I'll, I'll find it at some point, but the, the from what I understand, they're about to be going for ridiculous amounts of money. Oh, I can only imagine. It's, but how many do they make? Not enough because they were sold out. 
Oh, don't tell me this is this Well, you year. know those guys that can buy big big bulk orders of them. Here, I mean, the the promo video they did was honestly kind of cool. Check it out. Let me see this thing. It's like a like Mortal Kombat. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure Calvin could probably just really throw the groove out good too. He can throw anything good. Yeah, uh, yeah. They did it, and it was gone so fast. Yeah. So I'm jealous. If anybody has one that they just want to send me, that's watching this podcast, they just want to send just out of the kindness of your heart, yeah. or if you just want to sell it to me at a normal price, I would love to buy one because I want to throw it. Everyone, people talking about collecting them to hang them up. I want to throw it. I will bag the thing. I will bag the thing. And use it as one of my main drivers all year. Anyway, actually, just send any groove you have laying around to Philip. Yes, yeah, send it, any. It any doesn't groove. matter if I get a box full of grooves. <laughs> that would I'd honestly be impressed. I'm like, who's watching this and sending me grooves? <laughs> Who has this many grooves? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> send it anonymously, anonymously, so I can try and figure it out. <laughs> Speaking of groove, have you seen these? The Zone Groove Top. Oh yeah, is the, the, is that the, the banger? Zone GT with the, the banger, banger top. Banger top. Yep. Uh, I that's slick. That's how I feel. I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a huge fan of it. But I, I don't. I'm not a fan of the ringer top either or whatever. No, but I like. I like plastic that I can grip well. Oh yeah. You know. And that but that's, that's pretty it's slick. kind of slick. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hmm. man. How's so it, what's the numbers on that thing? Four three zero three. Yeah, it's a zone. It's just a zone. Uh, but yeah, I'm. I'm pretty sure at some point someone could come walking through the door here because the. Th- I think they were trying to pick something up. And I, that'd be okay if they do. Then they get on the podcast. Zach, I'm talking to you. I think I hear him down out here. Not twice, Zach, if it's your... Yeah, right. <laughs> Hello? Um, that's funny. All right, so talking about, like, the reason I kept... I'm bringing up all these different discs. So I want to get around to this. What drives... What do you think drives disc sales? And I, I ask... I was thinking about this. Prodigy had a lot of wins last year. We didn't sell a lot of Prodigy last year. Mm-hmm. Um, Discmania is winning a lot this year or doing really well this year. I mean, they're kind of like ho-hum. MVP hasn't won a single event, and no one's been close this year, and they sell a lot. So, like, like what sells disc? What makes people go, man, I really want to buy that kind of thing? Mm. It's, it, I, would, I would have to think it's more on the local level. You know, someone finds something – that's working for them. I mean, yeah. think about that. You know, me and you probably have somewhat similar arm speeds. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, sure. I mean, you outdrive me that much, not by much, a lot. <laughs> um, I don't. I mean, that's okay. Yeah. But um, you hit that. You point. know, but if if it's like you you got something, or maybe I have something that came out. Yeah. DD wise, and I'd be like, dude, you need to check this out. Yeah. You know, this might fit your arm. <laughs> he, he knocked more than once. <laughs> he did knock multiple times. Yeah. Uh, man, I don't even know what to. I don't hey, even, it's open. Yeah, just come on in, join the podcast. Yep, let's go. Come on in, join the podcast, Zach. Hey, bro. Look who it is. <laughs> Can you see him back there? He's coming. He came. He came after something. I'm trying to think what he came after. He oh, must yeah. have been hearing about this jelly bean plastic. <laughs> yeah. Creative editing. So Zach, it's all good. Zach, um, just bought his. <laughs> he just bought his disc. He came in for one of those Kratoses, man. So look, they're going fast. They're going like hotcakes. Hotcakes. Like, you want to? If you want some of these Tour Series discs, they really are going fast. So we sold like probably half of them uh, already that we got. So that's cool. I'm glad people are liking them. Anyway, well there back. you go. That's that's driving disc sales. You know, the, this this is unique. You don't you don't yeah. see this produced year in year out. And, you know. Obviously, you see something with Macbeth's name on it every year, but sure. you know that plastic and that design. That's, I mean, I'm this is what is this the Kratos? Yeah, that's a new disc as well. That is just, just mold? came out. It's the only the only way you can get that mold is is through this through that right now. Yeah. yeah. So, so so yeah, of course that's going to be hot. That's going to drive it right. So unique stuff. It's definitely unique. <laughs> is on the on the top of the list. Like if you can't get it anywhere else. Um, then it's like top of the list kind mm-hmm. of thing, and that includes plastic. Usually, mold. It's if it's mold and plastic, 
absolutely that's on the, that tops the list most time but then then it comes to like plastic even if the mold has already existed there's this new plastic that's like special fancy kind of thing right. um i think mvp has this thing going right now um, because simon won some things last year but i don't think that's the top of why they're selling the selling things i think simon has an appeal all on his own he is he's a likable guy when he wins he he seems like a fan favorite kind of thing and then they he they are putting new disc out with his name in like new molds and so right i think new molds even though they're probably molds that already exist go they go it happens people people want to try them out people want to give them a shot people want to be the only ones with them and if this is the only way you can get this right now i guarantee uh i've got them for 27 and that's after tax i'm i guarantee there's people going to be selling them for close to twice that because that's the only way you can get them right, right. now uh so I don't know, man. I I, th- I used to think winning drove sales because Discraft for was like leading so hard when Paul Macbeth was winning all the time. Everybody was buying Discraft. Like, well, that was that's the thing though too is like when he when he switched over from Innova to Discraft, signed the huge contract and all that stuff, and then they they come out with this new line. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, of course they're gonna jump all over that. Sure, yeah, you know, everybody's gonna jump on that, and. um you know, I, I think that's that's gonna drive. I mean, I think you're gonna see Discmania sales go up. Sure. With you know Gannon moving over. It depends on if I think it depends if they do n- new molds for him. I think I think that matters. Because uh, right now, like the stuff with his name on it is stuff they've already had they've with like had, yeah yeah with like a little stamp of Gannon Burr. So they got to do something unique with them, or it's not gonna drive sales. I think. Right. Yeah, I mean that's a good possibility too. So. Yeah. I. Th- <laughs> Prodigy, I don't. They can't win for losing right now. I mean, like last, I'm telling you, last year Gannon was winning. Isaac Robinson won Worlds. Prodigy, they were winning stuff. I mean, Luke Humphreys, I think. I mean, like people were popping off, and they just wasn't. You got to remember though, Gan- Gannon was winning in spite of them. In spite of <laughs> Prodigy, yeah. right? Uh, man, but I just, I, I would like to see Prodigy kind of go on a resurgence but i don't know what that's going to take like i'm talking to another a couple of my buddies and listen I, i'm going to keep prodigy stocked like if, if i don't have I, I want at least some of their lineup because i know people there are people that still mm-hmm. throw it but i know buddies who um retail buddies who have not ordered prodigy in years and can't get can't sell the stuff that they had kind really of thing. yes uh so how would anyway i'm just trying to in my head, I used to think winning drive sales, but I don't think that's the case because Brody hasn't won a single dang thing, and that Zone OS is gone. It's gone, gone. Right. It's got Brody's name on it, and it's unique. You're not going to find another disc like that other than like the Baobab or the Stego. And so, and he was he. There's a couple people that like win or lose. You slap their name on it, even if it's already not even just their name. It might have a special logo or whatever, but you slap their name on it, it's going to sell. Mm-hmm. Brody's one of them. I think Simon's one of them. Uh, Paul was one of them, but I don't think that's the case right now, uh, because I think you, we can. St- I think I can still order some of his six-time commemorative release stuff from from Discrad. I think they still got some in their warehouse. Uh, I mean, who else? Who you, I mean, who else sells discs like that? Kristen Tatar, kind of. Yeah, I mean, they Latitude put a big lineup with her name on it. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it helps winning two world championships. Right, but winning helps. Yeah, right? but it. It's not the. I mean, bro. Like I said, Brody yeah. ain't won a single thing. Yeah, and but you know, he's also got a huge following, right? You know. Yeah, I mean, he's a celebrity in a way. And who knows? Maybe he bought them all up. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I think Simon's like that too. Where he, I think he's he's past the point of win and sell his stuff. I think he's so likable. People people buy his stuff. Um, but yeah, it's just weird. Like it's weird trying to like understand the ebb and flow of disc sales as a retailer like what do i need to order what do i not need to order uh at one point in time discraft when i was buying their stuff esp was what's in and that or not esp big z was cool mm-hmm. uh and now nobody really wants big z they just they want z or esp right uh i haven't tried their recycled stuff because i don't know if discraft people wouldn't be interested in their recycled stuff kind of and it's just it you can get the kratos in another plastic i just remember too i skipped the the first release of the in the the base plastic Kratos. This mm-hmm. is not this is the premium plastic. Uh but anyway, all that being said, 
I'm just curious. Like, te- you tell me if you're watching this. Like, what makes you want to go? What makes you want to buy a disc when you see a disc or you think of a disc or whatever? What makes you go, man? I, I want that. Uh, I'm just, just out of curiosity. Dylan, y- you buy a disc. Uh, <laughs> tell you, you say, tell me, because I, I think I'm out of touch a little bit. Because I'm like, oh, I, when I see it, if I want it, I'm having it. <laughs> right, because <laughs> right. I can. Uh, anyway, I, I'm maybe a little bit out of touch because I'm not. What would make me spend money on the disc? And I think that's where I'm at now. Yep. It's just like I've been playing so long. I got enough stockpile of what I like. And I'm like, well, I'm probably not going to buy that or, right. you know. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's it's the we just need that fresh, the fresh craze. You know, when we first started, yeah, we're right. like, oh, yeah, let's, I got to have that. Let's build, I gotta new, have that. Let's build a new bag. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> let's try it and see. Uh so, all right, so if you had to give, so moving on to a section right here, you've been playing pro for a, for a while. Uh, Six months. That's not true. No, it's not, totally <laughs> I was like, true. that's more like me. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, you've been pr- playing pro for a little while. What what would be like your biggest advice to like a not a new player, but a player who wants who is like moving out of that new newness? Like, how do you how do you get better? Like, how do you get to that? How do you get to that 900 plus like consistent golf kind of thing? I mean, you got to practice. practice. You got to put in good practice, like legit practice. That you, yeah. When I say that, it's not one of those. I'm just gonna go throw around with my buddies. That's, yeah. that's not practicing. Sure, you know, mm-hmm. you need like you're off on your own. Find a field. Yeah, you know, work on those fundamentals. Mm-hmm. Get, you know, find your own practice basket. Yeah, just away because like, you know. I I used to do it on my lunch breaks. Yeah, and I'd go to there was a course right down the street for me, and I had an hour break. It'd take me ten minutes to drive down there, and I'd putt for forty minutes and drive ten minutes back to work. Yeah, you know? yeah. But you got to practice. You sure. got to do that stuff. And I mean, and then and then, you know, when you when you feel like you might have a little bit more skill, yeah, then you know, test yourself with it. Sure, play up a division. Yeah. Even if it's the monthlies, yeah, in your local club scene, yeah, you know, go play and see what see that what competition's happens. up. Yeah, you know, see where you stand with that competition. You yeah, know? I think that's a good that's a good advice. I think practice is funny because I think practice gets overlooked enough and a lot. I think it gets overlooked a lot. Where if you're getting better at disc golf, you're probably in putting in the backyard. You're probably uh, trying at mm-hmm. the same not. If you're at your course practicing, you're probably trying the same shot over and over and over right. again um, until you get that one dialed, and then you're going to the next one, trying that one over and over and over again. Um, and if you're, and then in a the field, I think for me, knowing my distances of disc was like a game changer. Oh, uh, for sure, yeah. Like when my be- bag finally got settled, and I said, okay, I can throw this disc 200. I can throw this disc. on a hyzer. Yeah, I can throw this on an anhyzer. Right, you know. And mm-hmm. this is this is how this reacts in a headwind, right. you know, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. That you're not gonna get that just playing around with your buddies. Mm-hmm. You know, you won't have that, you know, analytical aspect in right. your mind to yeah. say, Okay, I know I'm throwing into a headwind. Right. I am gonna throw every disc in my bag right. into this headwind mm-hmm. and we're gonna see what happens. What each one of them does. Right. It's a little extra work picking them all up, but yeah. Yeah, man, I, I'm with you. I think as this funny cause it's it's like opposite. It's counterintuitive because I'm a I'm a shop owner, so I want to sell disc, right? But not not really. Like I do want to sell disc, but I want to see people get better at the game. And if you're good at the, if you're getting better at the game, it's going to make you want to uh, continue playing. And then when you need something, I've got it for you, kind mm-hmm. of thing. And so, uh, like, and the advice of hey, get your bag settled for a little while is like counterintuitive, right? Right, but that's what I, that's really what I want you to do. I want you to find discs that you like, and then settle on those things, settle on those discs, and then when you f- realize you you have a hole, or realize hey I want to try something else, do it one at a time. Don't like, don't don't. Or go or as stuff. like your arm speed increases, mm-hmm. you know, you need to get more Upgrade. stability yeah. or something. Absolutely, yeah. yeah, for sure. And then you know, always putt with a warden. <laughs> that's <laughs> always putt with a warden. Uh, I think. Inside of what inside of the circle is like put with what you think feels good, I think. Uh in my you're you're the putter, but it's all it's all about what's comfortable. Yeah. You but, know, what what can what can you get on a on a 
consistent release. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, it's like I cannot stand the bead. Oh, that's I sad. Can't. No, no, I just can't <laughs> do it. So, like, even even the one putter I have for, like, if it's a little bit of headwind, if it's a lot of headwind, I'm just I'm, I'm putting with my slammer. Mm-hmm. But if it's just a little bit, I'll, I'll, I'll grab the, the Emac Judge, and it just has a micro bead. Mm-hmm. And, you know, by, you know, if you hold, held the warden and that, that up, you know, it's like okay, I see a bead, yeah. but in my hand, I feel a bead. Sure. And you it's know what I'm saying? I, I yeah. yeah, and I'm just like, no, this this, this is novel. Not, this is not what I want. <laughs> you know, that's funny. Yeah, I switch putters so much I can't tell you. Uh, I'm I'm I've settled on the pixel now for a little while, but that ain't even been out. That it hasn't even been out very long. Right. But uh, yeah, I think inside the circle, nothing has really changed for the most part. It's maybe circle's edge, but then. Outside the circle, I think is when the putter matters more. I th- I think. Yeah, and you know you you like that beaded style putter anyway, but you bit. you spin. Yeah, you put a lot of spin on, it, and I, I don't. To. You know, I'm I'm I, I got a little more loftier putt than you do, but yeah, you know, but sure. you know, if you spin, you're gonna want you're gonna want to probably beaded putter. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any in here, but the pixel has like a micro bead, but I put it with the pure for a second because somehow. That trilogy challenge that we played, mm-hmm. and I shot like twelve hundred. Yeah, it had pure, to be had to be the putter. The pure tricked me because <laughs> I was like, okay, I guess I'm using the putter, but it wasn't. I mean, Kristen puts with pure, so yeah, they got to be good. I threw the pure well. I did, that's what it turned out. I threw the pure okay. I didn't put the pure right. well. So, uh, so I learned. Yeah, I learned. that's it's better. It's a better throwing putter for me than it is a putting putter. Yeah, that's that's how I feel. I like it. That's mm-hmm. a throwing putter. Um, but yeah, so get your for me, it'd be get your back settled. Um, know your distances and then hit you hit your circle once <laughs> if you can hit those I, I i went from i was like just play boring and hit my circle one putts i got mm-hmm. out of ma2 pretty fast i mean like i felt like okay i probably should play ma1 right. now that now that i i can't play ma2 anymore but i used to sneak sneak back into it every now and then yeah uh but now i can't play yeah boring. i mean it's there's, there's a lot lot to the game than just throwing throwing your disc too to become a 900 rated player yeah you know and it's like that'll just come over time Uh, yeah you know learning that stuff so i think yeah i have a buddy the other owner of the shop he's like uh i mean he's i love him i love you charlie if you're watching this (laughs) he's not a great disc golfer and i think 900 to him seems insurmountable but I don't. I don't think it is. I think that it just comes with time and playing and learning your bag. We, and uh, I think that's everybody kind of thing. Like, yeah, have fun, buy your disc, do do whatever. But like, when it comes to, you got to practice. Like mm-hmm. you said, you got to practice. Get your yeah. bag settled. Throw in, throw it, throw that shot ten times. Put as many times as you can. It can it, while while doing the same thing. Like if, once you get, I like what Gannon says. Man, I'm all over the place. But I like what Gannon <laughs> says. Um, he was like. If you, as long as your attention span can putt, putt. But once your attention span is shot, I think it actually you can you'll start hurting yourself putting because you're like going oh, to spot. Hundred percent agree yeah. because um, I'm not going to say names, but I had a conversation not too long ago about, and he was telling me I, I was like uh, he wants my help, mm-hmm. you know, because I'm I almost feel like it's it's about that time for clinics and lessons again yeah. or something. But I'm getting a lot of requests. Sure, but um, he asked me to help in my putting. And um, I said, well, you know, it's repetition, you know, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And he says he's out there putting like three hours a day. Sure. A day. And I'm like, that's a lot. That's, I, that's too much for me. That's a lot. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, I said, I said, because you get to a point where you you start fatiguing, mm-hmm. you know, you're, it's just inevitable. You're going to yeah. be fatigued. And if you continue to do that, yeah, you're just going to form bad muscle memory. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and it's just like. You start getting tired, you can stop. Yep. You mm-hmm. know. If, yeah, absolutely. Switch if, switch to something else. Use a different muscle group. Absolutely. Something, you know. Agree. If you're done, just be done. It's okay. Yeah. It, it's okay to be done. Like hit that last putt, short putt, and make you feel better about hitting that putt. Right. And then be and then, and then be done. Uh, yeah. It took me a minute to get up to get to that point because I think I was like I wanted so bad to be good at putting, and I'm not good at putting, but I wanted so bad to be good at it that I would practice so much that when I got I got to the course. Like, I still hadn't formed a habit. 
because I because I'd get to the point where I was tired or get to the point where my my uh, attention wasn't there, and I'd just like go pick up my five discs, throw throw five of them, and then go pick them up again, and not go through my rot- my routine, mm-hmm. not go through my like what is my release supposed to feel like? I was just throwing for like wasting time, basically right. is what it turned into. But which, yeah, which would lead to bad form. And, mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, uh, inconsistencies. But okay, uh, that's man, that's your putting advice from. I, I kind of interrupted a little bit, but from your from the 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 world champion putter, he knows. Uh, all right, so before we get into the local scene, uh, I want to know if you've watched any of the the tour stuff or if you kept up with anything. Kind of what maybe your biggest surprise, and your biggest disappointment. I'm not dis. No, we're not really disappointed, but yeah. what you think is like, man, that that's really disappointing. <laughs> I mean, I have no disappointments at all. Yeah, I figured you, know? you would say that. No, I that's really funny. don't. I mean, yeah. Obviously, I'm a fan of the sport. Yeah, been playing in a long time. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I'm, you know, I, I, as far as you know, the disc golf tour going or something. Yeah. I mean, I yeah. I have no like expectations on who's going to win yeah you know any given yeah. tournament so it especially on the lady side at this yeah, point for sure you know men's side yeah you know, it's probably ab is going to be up there <laughs> <laughs> i'm excited about it man calvin will be up there yeah. you know the, you, the mainstays will be up there in the in the hunt i mean that you know this might be ab's year yeah we'll see for sure you know we'll see when worlds comes around if he's still riding that mm-hmm. momentum and you know, what happens if he wins like you know four pro tour events and and then someone else wins worlds? Like, I mean, he'll probably make just as much money. Yeah, right. You know, it's like he'll probably still if that happens, he'll end up being player of the year, and but he won't be the world champion. I mean, I think I think ultimately everybody wants the world's title. You know, yeah, I think so too. They would probably trade in one world's title for four pro mm-hmm. tour wins. Yeah, like if they in could, a heartbeat. Oh yeah. Being yeah. a world champion, if like one time that and I think that and USDGC are the most prestigious, like titles. Like if you're the winner, the US winner or the world's winner, it's like mm-hmm. I did something. I hit. I did a major kind of thing. Right. And I won a major. Uh, but and it's like that's the one everybody knows that so he's the world champion. And you are that for a year, kind of thing. No, nah, you're that forever. Oh yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, you're yeah, always you're a world. You're champion. reigning for a year, and yeah. then you get then you get to be a one time forever. Yeah. And then maybe more. Uh, I, I my biggest surprise probably this year is that Kristen hasn't won a, like every event. <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly surprised by that, and I'm happily, I'm gladly surprised by that. And then uh, I think probably my biggest disappointment. It I'm not I, like I I'm not disappointed in anybody. Like it's not I don't have any ill fi- ill will or ill feelings towards any of the players. Like I don't know. <laughs> it's their life, and honestly, I just want to play disc golf but i enjoy watching it and right. i think what i'm surprised and in a negative way about is that um simon hasn't been in like the top 30 simon lazat hasn't been in the top 30 this year so far which is kind of wild to me is that really yeah i'm wow. pretty sure or maybe top 25 but he hasn't been he hasn't been close uh wow so he he's been on leaderboards but then like he never he hasn't finished yeah, well this he, year so yeah uh i'm so that's my s- sad surprise because <laughs> I want that is a crazy stat. You know, I wonder yeah. how much of you know. I mean, we're both fathers, so yeah. you know how the newborn thing is. I don't yeah, know how man. old his kid is now, but I'm sure it's still diaper stage. Sure, yeah, you know. So, and you know, maybe that's maybe that's what's taken away from. Maybe uh, practice time or something, you know, he, oh, absolutely. he, he doesn't want to miss out on all those things, you know, the mm-hmm. childhoods. Maybe his off season was a little more lackadaisical than yeah, them maybe. in the past because he's hanging out with his family and his kid. Well, uh, and you got to think about this. It's like he signed a huge contract, mm-hmm. so it's not like he's okay. The pressure's there right. to win. Mm-hmm. Now it's more like, all right, let's, let's just win if right. I can win, you know, mm-hmm. otherwise I'm just going to go play disc golf. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, what would, that would feel awesome to have like no pressure in the world, and it wouldn't take. By the way, anyone out there, it wouldn't take a million dollars for me to, you know, feel no pressure or like to feel no. good about disc golf. Just yeah. if you wanted to like you know, throw sixty to a hundred my way, easy, easy. I'll do it. I'll do it. 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> You're right there, too. <laughs> uh, I live it. Anyway, so let's talk about the local scene real quick. Um, let's. We've had a couple tournaments come through. Uh, Urban Eagle came and went. We talked about that a little bit. But I, I want to talk about y'all's tournament. I want to talk about the Red Rock Open. True. To, yeah. Let's, so, you missed that one, buddy. I know, man. Easter weekend. No, I, I know. Talk about it. Uh, but 30, how many people signed up? So not 30. That's, my, that's what's going on there. We had... 78 let's go players more than double let's go yeah 78 which, which is amazing that is awesome at yeah Tullahoma. it was like the the mpo field was 29 yeah players. i saw man that made me so i wanted to play i and could have done okay <laughs> oh 100 percent. yeah for sure I, uh, it was it i very much enjoyed being the td yeah and being able to just have the player interaction uh Walk, you know, I, I we had a perfect spot that we put our chairs, and we were able to watch four different holes being played on the course sure. at the same time. Yeah. Um. And you know that I I hope that that just kind of sets the precedence yeah. for the club, sure, in future events mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Um. You know, probably helped that Logan. Bowers signed up yeah. early, yep. and then Shoestrick shows up Will you know, on the registration list. Yeah. And come to find out, he has family in Tullahoma. Yeah, so hopefully he comes to more yeah. stuff. That'd yeah, be great. Yeah, for sure. So, and, you know, my whole my whole gig was um, with the board. Well, we had two of our members playing, so I kind of gave them the day off. But, yeah, you know, but shout out to Joe because him and I were troopers. And, yeah. Um. But he, you know, we we had a debacle with the PayPal thing. Oh yeah, you, you so, got that. You got that figured out. We had it figured out. Let's go. And so we had it. Um, I had to shut down the online registration. Bro, your <laughs> face when you found out about that, you were so worried. Oh I yeah, did. dude, I went into like <laughs> frantic mode. You did at that frantic point. mode. Uh, but you got, I got, you know, secured secured those funds so that way they weren't doing nothing. And so, but anyhow. When uh, we had a plan of action for the morning of, yeah, which went smoother than I could have imagined. Sure, okay. Um, all seventy-eight people, because you know, not all seventy-eight were signed up online. Okay, and it was one of those. Just let me know. I'll add you manually. Pay me yeah. the morning of. Mm-hmm. And if you've ever ran an event, you know that day of signups is a pain, a pain in the butt. Yeah, and so I, I you know, I, initially I didn't want to do it. And then I had no choice but to sure, do it. Sure, yeah. You know? So, uh, yeah, getting that handled went super smooth. Um, and the players were very um, understanding. And they were they just wanted to play, too. But, yeah. uh, you know, Flying Colors came out there to, to mm-hmm. do the van handle. Them. And pay outs. Yep. yep. Ed and Kim. I'm coming to help with it next time, Ed and Kim. Even if you're coming, I'm <laughs> coming, too. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so – it was it was great all yeah. 78 players that's you know basically showed up and checked in yeah and you know i think i was gonna do a players meeting and i was like nope yeah. after that whole when i had to switch the day up i'm like yeah, yeah. we're doing a video, video yeah meeting. i think i saw it yeah yeah so anyway it, it it went off pretty good and um i wanted it to really be a players event yeah for them mm-hmm. and i hope i did them justice yeah with it you know we had the music playing. It was yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was good. It was a fun, fun little turnout, fun little setup. Look forward to the next one, which will be in June. Oh, sweet. Mm-hmm. June what? Let me write that down. Twenty ninth. June twenty ninth. My pen is over there. It's a, it's gonna be a, um, it's gonna be a tough one. Why? Oh, why is it gonna be tough? You're gonna play the new holes? Yeah, we're playing all twenty seven. Oh, let's go. Two rounds. Two rounds of twenty seven. Yeah. June twenty ninth. Yeah, I think so. Saturday. Oh yeah, I'm I'm gonna be there. <laughs> yeah, it's I don't, I don't know if we'll get the the massive turnout, but yeah, it'll be fun. It'll be fun to kind of get. It'll the, be grueling. I see y'all already started working on those. Um, let me just tell you about this new nine people. If you've never played Tullahoma, the <laughs> other on Monday I went out there and I shot five down on the on the regular course, and so I was feeling good. I was like, man, I got a bogey. I still shot five down. I'm feeling good. I'm let's go play this new nine. I shot six over on the new nine. <laughs> uh, 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 yeah. That, and that sucker, there's just a couple holes over there that's like, why? Why did you do this to me? So <laughs> so most most people saw Jennifer out there getting ready for the Red Rock. Yeah. 
like every day. Yeah. You know, they say, you know, she took a break, took a week off from good going to the course and working yeah. on it, good. but she needed it. Yeah. And, uh, but she's going to start tackling that new nine. It looks like you've already done a little bit of, over there. Now we, I don't know who's done that. Oh, okay. That's the thing. Her and I walked it the other day just to kind of get an idea of what needed done. Yeah. And I'm like, Somebody's already been out here. There's some trees like lining lining, lining yeah. up the greens. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. You know? Um, I have my suspicions on who was doing it. Yeah. Cuz I mean, they've they've done plenty to the original 18 as well. Yeah. And I mean, like more power to them. Sure. You know? I mean, they haven't to me, they haven't done anything that since I know there were some trees cut down early like at some point in time that like weren't approved or whatever and all right. that stuff. But what I noticed this time was just like the same kind of stuff you guys were doing where you like line, line the fairways right. and things like yeah, that. Yeah. And I think so they just nice. started implementing it over there, which is fine. Yeah. You know, it's, so we'll see how that turns out. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, there's probably going to be some trees falling. Yeah. You guys got by the okay. way of chainsaw. There, there has to be look hole. I'm t- oh, what hole is it? 26. The, the one before the last one. It's yes. A par four. Yes. I threw the best shot I could have ever thrown <laughs> on that hole. I hit the gap perfectly right. with the mid range. It started fading a little bit, landed in the middle of the fairway, and you walk up there and there's nothing. Yeah, like you're in yeah. the middle of the fairway and there's not a shot to the basket. Yeah. Not this, this. I was like, this is stupid. <laughs> yeah, so I've mad. been there. I've been there. <laughs> I was like, Man, I just piped that drive. Yeah, hit the mouth, mm-hmm. the gap, and which I, I like that nothing. shot. I like the mouth shot. Mm-hmm. But then once you get around the corner, it's like, <laughs> right, there's trees in the yeah. middle of the fairway. That one will be addressed, um, I'm sure. Yeah. And the one, I don't even know the whole number. That's how often I get back there. 23? 25 is a good hole. 23 is the one where you kind of come around and come back into the woods. Oh, yeah. That. Yeah. There's no that you can't get to the if that's a part three you can't get to the basket. Yeah. I, I think I've I've only yeah, seen one person get there. I've I've gotten there luckily. Yeah, right. That's that's, that's not shot. an easy shot mm-hmm. at all, and you got to have a lot of luck to get through all those trees, but. Yeah, yeah, that one will probably get thinned out. Yeah, that, I know? think that's all it needs. Um, the one after that is, that's the like one that's kind of a forehand, right? Yeah, the kind of right, right yeah. turn. That might just need clean. Yeah, that one's not terrible. No. Okay, so but well, talking about the original eighteen, yeah. Red Rock Open. Yeah. Hot score was seven, right? Seven mm-hmm. under. That's what it looked In like. One round. Lo- yeah, yeah, Logan Lo- shot Logan seven. Second round. The second I think, round. Yeah. Um, and I believe, so what I. Just looking at the numbers, I think the course after you guys cleaned it up, changed everything, and then played with the full tournament. What I'm, what I was kind of seeing is that the course got only one stroke easier, like it, according to like what was last year. But I think, as far as like ratings go, I think like nine, whatever was nine thirty last year was like right. it was nine twenty this year. I think that's cool. I think that's perfect. Uh, I think what y'all have done makes a thousand rated rounds harder to get in Tahoma because the grouping's closer together mm-hmm. because it's easier to get out of trouble. And no, there was zero thousand rated rounds right. thrown. Right, yeah, for sure. And there was a thousand rated player in the field. Mm-hmm. And I think that's I think seven down in the past may have been able to be a thousand plus rated. But right. now I think the field which was spread out this much because you could like the underbrush and the bad stuff was turning your what would be a four into a six. Right. Is now compressing everything together in order to get that thousand rate around you got to be separated from the field a little bit and the field is more compact yeah and like i don't know if you could follow along at all but like i thought at one point in time we were having a three-way playoff oh yeah for, in open logan danny and will Schustrick? No, no um josh Lehu. oh okay. yeah those yeah. three right there i mean it was just flip-flopping mm-hmm. the whole second round yeah okay and so i mean it was it was good to see it was exciting dude i heard i heard that I feel like every time I hear about Logan in Tullahoma, I hear about like some mythical line that he's taken. And I heard that whole one, he went over the trees on the left, like up and around everything. Yeah. And he still got a bar. Well, let, me, let me tell you something, though. <laughs> he took that shot. And then right behind him, because like I, I look, I'm like, man, I've never seen anybody go that way. <laughs> I've done it a couple times. And then the very next person, John Lynn, yeah. he's a DD teammate of mine, lives from up in uh, Dixon. Takes the same line, parks it. Yeah, I'm like, dude, is it, how how are y'all even throwing it that high, <laughs> dude? So, I I went out there and threw it a couple times. It's there, to me though, it doesn't. It's not. It's cl- It's not clear enough and, to and, take it. But and in in Logan's defense as well too, he was playing. He still is playing with a torn, torn labrum. labrum. Mm-hmm. 
So he can't really full power his forehand because after he threw that shot, you can tell it was hurting. And I asked him, I said, dude, you you need some ibuprofen? I mean, you know. And he said, yeah, man, that one kind of stung a little bit, you know. So he maybe 100% Logan? Absolutely. All day, yeah. All day. Yeah. But, yeah. But for him to even think that and John to even think that shot, I'm just like, yeah. what are y'all seeing up there? Yeah, I've never seen it before. Now I get it. I see it. I went out there. I don't. In my head, though, wh- why why would I throw a 400 foot, like 400 feet of forehand power up there to try and hit a hit that gap up high? Because it's still hitting a gap. I mean, it's probably and and if you think about this, it may not be that much different than the second shot on 12, where a lot of people take that big spike Kaiser up over it's, the top. It's not two. that much different. You it's know not, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I mean, the, there's there's a tree though on the corner of the uh, parking lot that yeah. you have to throw over top of. Oh yeah. And so that, that makes that shot harder than I think the, the one on 12 where people throw over yeah. the top. I'm telling you, I went out there and threw it a couple times. I parked it twice. And then one time it went OB and the other time it, it I think it's a pretty safe shot. I just think that the gap up there is not, is about the same size or even smaller than just the, the straight gap. If you're going to throw up. And you hand. know, what's even more amazing <laughs> is, um, not only did those two that I witnessed, I didn't see anybody else try that line, but <laughs> neither one of those two play that course enough to like be comfortable to yeah. throw that shot. It's not like a local line. No. Or <laughs> yeah. John came down and uh, he's like, "Yeah, I just wanted to check the course out." He never. He first round was blind. Yeah, you know he's never played it before. Don't you love that. And I'm just like, you know, so it's not like. It, those guys play it on a weekly basis to just sit yeah. there and, you know, screw around and, like, let me see if this line's opened up there. Yeah, or, right. You know, they just did it. I know. That's crazy, dude. I th- I think, yeah, I think I think you guys did, have done such a great job with the course that to the point where I think anyone who's competent at disc golf can come out there. They might step up to a hole and go, man, this is a stupid line, but I'm going to try to hit it anyway. But if they miss the line – they're not gonna get a seven. You know what right. I'm saying? They can they can get back up and try to get a three or maybe a four kind of thing. Whereas they're not they're not like leaving the course like grumbling and angry. Right. At, like that this is the dumbest course in Tennessee. I'm I'm starting to like Tahoma. Yeah. As a course. I mean I tell you what too, it's like seventy eight players went through their shotgun start mm-hmm. and I didn't hear like of any major backups that's unheard of out there somebody right. there's usually a backup in the in the gauntlet and everybody seemed to be in the same mood that they started yeah you know in the morning from you know round one yeah but yeah i mean i I was watching i'm like okay that that car that started on one you know they got through the front nine in about an hour yeah that's that's good and i'm like every hole was occupied at the start so yeah, there was right. no no gaps that i mm-hmm. could put anybody and even most holes had fivesomes yeah, and so it was just like, huh? No backups. I'll, I'll take it. Yeah, that's great. That's when we 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 started at nine fifteen, and I think we wrapped up with the wards around three thirty. That's that's the goal, right? Mm-hmm. That's that's the goal is to be done by three three thirty. I mean, I was home when the sun was still up. So. <laughs> that's that's absolutely the goal. Everything was you know right covered and mm-hmm, taken care of. Yep, man, that's awesome. I'm I'm super glad to hear it. Hopefully, the next one, uh, some people turn up and turn out for it. Um, and I'll get to play and show up and bring, <laughs> bring good line with me. Um, man, so Shelbyville, we have, we had the urban Eagle, which that tournament, um, we've talked about it last on the podcast a couple weeks ago, so I'm not going to go crazy on it, but that tournament, the wind always shows up for that tournament <laughs> for some reason. Um, and that uh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be so honest as a club like Shelbyville Disc Golf Club, which I'm the the treasurer of, <laughs> I think as a club, uh, we missed a lot of stuff like we that should have been done. And so I think we'll have to cross our cross our T's and dot our I's a little better next time. But there were some I the, I was kind of worried, and I had I was kind of worried that people left with some with a bad taste in their mouth because there weren't T pads drawn and. Uh, some lines were missing and some things are missing here or there. I don't, I, I, I honestly, when people get upset about the course, I don't care because that course is unique and right. um, it's a, it's an urban course. And yeah, 
it, I think I think what a lot of the confusion was yeah. as a player, yeah, was you know we step up and I don't think it was designated like okay here's the sign. Mm-hmm. Do we tee off from the left, left of it right. or the mm-hmm. right? Because yep. it's just like here, right? You know, and we had all that space, right? You know, and I can you know I can think of a few holes that it was like that, but then you know obviously it'll just come down to the group at yeah. that point, you know, but. I think we missed the mark on that tournament. Um, again, that tournament, I agree. I, I agree with you completely. As I'm walking up to holes, I'm thinking, "Oh man, we should have done this, or this should have been done. This should have gotten taken care of." Next year or next time we do that tournament specifically, or whatever, whatever, because we do it two a year there. Mm-hmm. Uh, next time we do it, I'll just, I know I need to be like make a list, and this is the things that need to get done for sure. And then when you get up, if you get upset that the course is crazy. That's just urban disc golf in general. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> that's how it goes. But I don't even. I mean, you 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 guys say obviously you're going to be your toughest critic. Sure, yeah. You know, you you guys as a board, but I mean, as a player standpoint, yeah. I mean, I, I thought it was I thought it was fine. Yeah. You know, maybe administrative stuff that you, you what you're thinking of. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah. Um, but no, the course was fun. You know, how would I would have loved to played the course with like. Regular. Zero wind, <laughs> <weather>. but you know, <laughs> what do you think of the new four? Um, that was fine. Yeah, I think, I think. Oh, you know what? I will, I will touch onto that one. Yeah, the whole three, two, two, the two, par five, big par five. Yeah, you know, because like someone had pointed out on my card, like, well, how how are they saying these are mandos, and like, there's no line drawn, that, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. You know, that was my biggest gripe. Um. <clears throat> But yeah, you know, I mean, as far as the hole itself, you yeah. know, the concept of that, I mean, that was that's a fine, that was a true par five, you know. I thought I was gonna hate that hole, and then when I started playing it and practicing, I was like, I th- this hole is actually fun. It's, yeah, it's a it's a neat idea. I think I think the following one, I, yeah, people probably would have loved not teeing off next to the dumpster. dumpster. Yep, <laughs> yep, I agree. I agree with that. That one was the one. But that was a fun hole minus yeah. the dumpsters. Yeah, like the elevation yeah. was cool. But yeah, I agree with that. The tee pad being in a gro- but, gross spot, <laughs> right? <laughs> but no, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, for for what y'all had, it was yeah. it's fine, and you know, it's, yeah, and everybody, you know, obviously was talking about. The one up in the bleachers, up in the corner. Everyone hates that one. <laughs> Everybody hates that one. But you the cannot, wind. you cannot take that hole out. No, you can't. You I cannot. think it's the signature yeah. hole. <laughs> Everybody hates that hole because they know. I mean, I, I look at them like, if I get a three, I'm happy. Me too. Just get a three. Yeah, that's it. I got three both rounds, mm-hmm. and I was like, okay, here we go. Yeah. And then, <laughs> in my first round, I was literally probably like 20 foot. Yeah. From basket. Yeah. But I mean, I was probably about you know eight rows down. Yeah, and I'm like, I ain't running I'm this. <laughs> There's not a no chance in the world is that putter getting higher than that rail. Right, exactly. You know, I said I'm throwing it right to that fence. Yeah, but I'm like, yeah. There's no way because they're like, you gonna run this? No. no. For those that don't know, man, it's 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 a it's at the top of these bleachers, top you're th- row, you're throwing like 250 feet, but it feels like more. No, it's like 300, but it feels like more. Be- no, it's, it's not It's probably 250, but you're throwing a 300-foot shot. Right, yeah. It feels like more because it's straight elevated, and then for some reason every year the wind comes straight up over those. It's like a headwind. It comes over the the bleachers. And so, like, <laughs> getting it getting it to stick on the bleachers is the first challenge. Yep. And then when it sticks there, then it's getting it, like, close enough to the basket to make you feel like you are you can putt. Yeah. So these ba- these bleachers are probably – What's the, how much is way up there? I'm thinking of like so 60 yards, so like 180 feet like wide, 200 feet <laughs> wide, and you're on the right side, and then there's a press box and there's a left side, and I'm painting this for you because I know Spencer Brown landed, he landed on the island bleachers because it's an island hole, but he landed. 200 feet away from the basket basically on the left side oh my gosh <laughs> i couldn't even imagine that upshot <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's like i think you're just i think the idea is like i'm gonna throw it hard at the basket and if i go out of bounds i'm putting for a four i get that i would hate no, that. you're not putting from where you went out of bounds though if you missed the island you, you were at you know but if you make the island and then throw from where you went out of bounds then you throw then you throw it off the island you don't go to the drop zone after you make the island 
you know. <laughs> so you're like, throw it at that basket, see what happens. Right. Because <laughs> anyway, I'm 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 tripping about it, but yeah, <laughs> that whole you can't take it away of that tournament. There's another tournament where that hole's not in, and that's I try to keep the Urban Eagle and flying with the Golden Eagles separate in a way, so that so that like each tournament so each tournament is distinct. Right. Because flying with the Golden Eagles is a sextuple mando. It's a double triple mando. It's four hundred foot par four. Have I played that one? That's the one where you, you start from the top of the field and you throw and then you you throw through the uprights and then you gotta go through the uprights again to get to the last you probably haven't played that one. I might not have. Um but anyway, here's my thing with the Mando. I'll stop talking about it because I'm I'm overly critical. I had fun, honestly. But uh there was the the Mando under the bleachers. I think it's whole Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. With it without it being marked. I walked up there with my card. I was like, look, it's not marked. Um, if any of us miss the Mando, if you argue with me at all, I'm just going to tell you, if you argue with me at all about had there's no Mando marked, I'm going to say, okay, you're, you're right. There's no Mando marked. I can't enforce that. Right. You know? Uh, it says in between the bleachers and the the bleacher pillars and the barn. The shed, yeah. It's like, okay, which bleacher pillar? Okay, is it this side of the shed or this side of the shed? So I was like, look, if you miss it and you go, well, there's nothing marked, I'm going to say, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. <laughs> so. And then just another side note, if when y'all walk through the gate, shut it behind you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. <laughs> Jeff had a fantastic shot on, there's one hole, it's like a triple mando, it's like th- almost, I think it's one, I want to say it's like a little over 350 feet. I mean, 300, 300 feet, it's like 330. Nah, man, it's like 420. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but you have to throw it high. So. Jeff hits the triple mando. He's like landing, like probably in, a, in circle one, in circle one, mm-hmm. in a perfect spot. But if you go under the bleachers, you're out of bounds, and and so and that was to pre- prevent people from going. When I'm under the bleachers, I can just go right on top of it. So, anyway, there's a the fence where Jeff would have hit and been right pretty close to the basket was open, and he flew, th- beautiful shot, flew through the fence and then slid right under the bleachers, <laughs> it through the gate, and I was like, oh my gosh, I think he just I watched it, <laughs> yeah, from the from the front side. Can't believe it. Anyway, but that tournament was fun. I think yep. you and I both had bad starts and then got like fought. Yeah, through. we turned it around. Yeah, but I, I'm okay. You ended up third. Yep. And I was on the last card, and I ended up last cash. I'm happy with that. Um, it was fun. Uh, yeah. So the next tournament we have coming up for in Shelbyville. Uh, I can't think. I can't think right now. Y'all have one right before the twenty on the twenty second. Of June, I know that. Oh yeah, June twenty second. We're right, right. We're right after you yeah. guys, and then June 29th. and then we've got G League. That's not a Shelbyville Disc Golf Club thing. That's a that's a good line disc golf thing. That's where we we'll bounce around. We're, we had to switch to Thursdays because my Tuesdays are just absolutely just packed. I couldn't. My yeah. wife told me, "Hey, your your Tuesdays are full. Food, you can't do the food toss is back up on Mondays. Yep, yep. Monday at HV <clears throat> Griffin. And what what is going on? Like everybody's throwing these flex starts, dude. Th- yes. It is like blown up. It has. Sad Dog, I think, is showing, and I I'll actually I really like the guys at Sad Dog, the guy, the people yeah. at Sad Dog. Um, yeah, I think they've they're showing some sh- showing something right now. Like they're doing a flex start every weekend. Yeah, at at least one. It's usually two or three. Yeah, sometimes uh, they do Saturday and Sunday, two different courses. And I've seen yeah. Saturday they got two flex starts mm-hmm. at Cane Ridge yep. each course. Right, because it's got it's two different courses. Yeah. I think they I, – I talked to Team Goodline about, like, hey, what's – like, tell me about these things. Because I'm, I'm playing, I think, this Saturday because my family's going to be in Nashville anyway, and so I'm going to play. We got our monthly. I know. I, I, if, my, if I was down here, I would play the monthly. Oh. But, but but I'm gonna we're going to be in Nashville for my niece's soccer game. Anyway, but I was like, hey, why are these – like, tell me about these. And so here's a couple things they said that they think is what is bringing people out to these. One is that there's no cap on the ace pot, and the ace pot rolls over to each one. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like the monthly thing, but there's no cap on it. I don't like – personally, I don't like keeping up with ace pots like that. Um, and so I don't want to hold that money because I, I don't want – I don't want. I don't know. It's just more to take care of, which I guess is probably lazy by me, <laughs> but whatever. Um, then – so there's that, which I may do. And then their, their M payout is – through vouchers or through like credit store mm-hmm. credit which i understand which is what perfectly it makes and sense. they can just keep banking it throughout the year yes but they can keep banking it yeah. so that i don't know how many of these flex starts are going to do but if you win a few of them like you're 
you're going to bank up, you know, a couple hundred, couple hundred, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred dollars worth of payout, especially with how many people are playing. Right. And then uh, you can get whatever you want. So I, that's smart. I'll probably do that if I if I were to do like a flex series. But I don't know, man. Uh, and they have so many good courses in Nashville. Right. That people are like, dang, I can go play Cane Ridge and get a rated round mm-hmm. at Cane Ridge. Uh, or I can go play uh, courses that courses that I don't normally have the chance to play right. for PDJ events. I think there's a lot of guys that are planning on going to Hop Springs after our monthly. Yeah, there's the uh, uh, Flying Colors is doing a flex start Absolutely, Saturday. Yeah, I would do that, like, but I think I'll be at a soccer game at that point <laughs> later in the day. Right. Um, but yeah, I think I don't know about. I, I actually like flex starts. I do. I think that flex. Oh, starts, we got a flex start coming. What is it? Tullahoma, um, April, oh, April 16th. Taco Tuesday. Yeah. I'll be there. Unless I qualify for MCO, and then we'll see. I may not be oh, there. Oh, is that Monday the qualifier? Monday's the qualifier. Tuesday's the Tuesday's the Taco Tuesday. And then that weekend is MCO, like Thursday, right. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I think. Or maybe it's just Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But but that's my buddy, Brian Shitaku, though. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to know about that. Yeah. Because so, I was like, man, that came out of nowhere. When, um, let's see, when I, f- was it my second year on the team dynamic, Brian was my team manager. Okay. And so, and I think he was there for a couple of years and like him and McCabe did, you know, they do their little serious thing. They're still yeah. good buds. But, um, I saw, you know, and every time Taco's in town, I make sure I, you know, yeah. go up and say hi to him. But, um, I saw that he was coming when that Wednesday he's running a flex start at Seven Oaks. Okay, and I'm like, dude, wow. if you're in town, I said I'll fit you in. Let's let's draw some, another event to Tullahoma. Yeah, you know. So he's yeah he was all for it. Shot. Yeah. yeah, he was all for cool. it. And I said, you know, he drives a Lone Star this van. Yeah, he's because he's with them now, and it's like you got some Lone Star players in the area. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You got some Lone Star fans in the area. Mm-hmm. I said absolutely. You know and. He might have a Lone Star disc that you might not carry. Oh, he's going to have some stuff that I don't You know what I'm saying? Sure. Or that they yeah. can't find locally. Mm-hmm. So it's like, come on, dude. Yeah. You know? And for he's sure. Like, he said, let me see if I can fit it in. Because he was running something in East Tennessee. Yeah. And then. Is he going to come stay with you? Yeah, I told him. I said, park the RV in the driveway. Sweet. Heck yeah. You know, we'll That's run awesome. an extension cord out to you. <laughs> That's awesome. You got to come in the house to use the bathroom. But. Yeah, you can take a hot shower and we'll, we'll go out and have a good meal or yeah. something, you know. But. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, man, I'm excited about that because uh, I, 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 I might play it. I'm going to play it because I'm not going to oh, qualify no. for MCO, but I'm going to play it. Uh, I'm going to be there. I'll play yeah. it to you probably. I mean, I I play Telehoma enough that I feel like I need to, mm-hmm. and I missed out on Red Rock, so whatever. uh man okay so that's our update i think um i kind of we haven't done we haven't had ratings updates since the last time we did like a ratings check i think uh but i know seth drain told me he's coming for me uh and he has been on he's been on a heater recently man he he (laughs) killed that uh food the food toss round the other day i saw it 10 18 it's pretty cool yeah all right man appreciate you guys hanging out with us for this time episode 11 i'm pretty sure i might have to count this up i may be wrong but it's at least 11 uh thanks for coming out jeff yeah of course yeah we'll we'll see you again next week so appreciate you guys peace ninja turtle we come out in the night after eating our pizza if you're doing crimes then we better not see ya because we will fight you up and who you gonna tell we're really really sweet must a splinter taught you well